Father, we thank you for the prayers that have been prayed, the songs that have been sung, an opportunity to worship you in giving. And now as we look into your word, we ask that you will reveal yourself to us in a greater manner so that we will follow your word and that we'll be like trees that are planted by the rivers of water and that our leaves will be bright and large and plentiful. But most of all, that we will be examples to the world in all that we say and that we do. We thank you and honor you for it. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Well, happy new year to one and all. Uh, happy new year. It is a new year. The year 2022 has it's not even 72 hours old as of yet. And here we are. And so today I wanted to take a, just take a moment, just to talk about, although the year is new, our God is still the same. Yes. And he doesn't change. And so I just want us to just take a couple minutes. I'm not going to be long because I just want to drop this in you and then let it just marinate in your life. Because we know that God does not change. That means we can participate in his redemptive plan for creation and trust him with our future. And our community can testify to God's unchanging goodness with our life together. And so we're going to be in James the first chapter starting at the 16th verse. Before we hit those scriptures, though, we got to hit our definitions. Our definitions for today are, the first definition is new. New means not existing before, made, introduced, or discovered recently, or now for the first time. The next definition is same. Same is identical not different. And then our final word for today is assurance. Assurance is a positive declaration intended to give confidence, a promise. So I've come today to assure you that although the year is new, our God is the same. James, the first chapter, Starting at the 16th verse in the English Standard Version says this. It says, do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits." of his creatures. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that it will fall upon the good soil of our hearts. In Jesus' name. So, as I said, I'm not going to take, take too long. You blink, you might miss a whole lot. But the first thing that I want to bring out is we have an obsession with New Year's. New Year's is a big celebration. We got parties, we have parades, we got uh, the ball falling down on the Empire State Building. We got all this going on. But the one thing that a lot of folks do talk about is resolutions. That the new year causes me to make a resolution to how I'm going to continue on this year. And so we celebrate the closing out of the old year and we look at the how we're going to go into the new year and plan how we're going to make changes. Now this is the funny thing to me. The funny thing to me is, excuse me, we talk about how we are going to change, but we are averse to changing. <laughs> No one likes to change. 
but we know that we need to. So it becomes a process by which we need to look at how we did before, and now we come to this date on the calendar and have decided that now I need to make a change. And so, although we're desperate to make a change in our lives, guess what? We don't want to change, so now we have this um, fear or this, this trepidation about what is it going to be like if I do change. So we go on to this bit of a roller coaster up and down and side is we're just going all over the place because we know we need to change, but we don't want to change and, and, and man, forget that change. There's folks that say that have made resolutions on the first and they woke up this morning and said that was yesterday. <laughs> and so Although, as we get ready to continue on into this new year, there can be some things that happened last year that we might be uh, sorrowful for or celebrating about. Or there can be some things that all this has happened for. But my, my thing that I want us to remember, based upon what we've read in the book of James is, God is with us. You're not doing this all by yourself. God is with you. So although we are in a constant state of change, did you realize that when you are resisting change, you are changing to adjust to the change that is trying to make you change? You'll catch that in a minute. That we're always constantly in a state of change, although we don't want to change. We want to get up at the same time. We want to do, we want everything to go the same way, but that never happens. Always changing. But the good thing is, God is always with us. So when we look at James, we, we see the first thing is, he said, now don't get it twisted. Don't be deceived. He's saying, don't allow yourself to deceive yourself because self-deception is the worst type of deception. Now, although you are in Christ, it does not remove deception from out of your life. Deception can come. So, if we look at it and allow ourselves to believe that it is better or worse than it is, it causes us to react in that manner. So then the next thing we know, we are in a direction by which we are not going to be happy. We are going to be in a mindset that is going to cause us to feel like we're isolated, lost, and everything is not going well. So first thing, we don't want you to be deceived. That change is coming. Change is a process of life. Yes. And so if you were a sinner, we would say that the biggest temptation is unbelief. If you are a Christian or a believer, the biggest temptation is misbelief. And so we don't want to fall into that misbelief. We want to trust in God, trust in him with our whole mind, body, and spirit. So, Having faith in God does, and, and, and believing that Jesus rose from the dead and, and, and everything that is required for you to be a believer, a citizen of heaven, does not exempt you from bad theology. And in this case, and what James is talking about, he is saying that this is the bad theology. The belief that God is the cause of our temptation. God, why are you tempting me? God don't tempt you. He 
James has taken the moment and said, listen, God is not going to tempt you. And he cautions believers against two problems. The first, believing that God has no right to expose his children to trial. Now notice, trial versus a temptation. God will allow situations to try you, but God does not tempt you. He does not put something that he knows will cause you to fall in front of you so that you will fall. That's not how God does business. He does kind of like a trainer in the gym. He builds up your faith muscle by giving you little challenges that he knows that if you have trust and confidence in him that you can overcome easily so that when the temptation does come, you have the strength and the, 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 uh, the, uh, the stamina to overcome it. So the first thing is believing that God has no right to expose his children to trials and believing that God is the source of our temptation to sin. Now, this can become a situation where we're sitting up here and we're saying, Lord, don't let, don't let them make too many sweet potato pies because you know I'm trying to lose weight this year. <laughs> and we say things like this. One of my favorite things that used to, it kind of drove me crazy at, at first, but then I understood it later on. But we would have a meeting at the one church I went to and, the, and part of the prayer was, that, that God would remove all the calories from the food. And I would be sitting there, i said, God can't remove the calories from the food. You just don't have to eat it. But then I, I, I you know, I, was, I guess I was a little bit too deep in shallow water. And so I was just like, okay, I understand. He, we know it can't happen. So it's kind of like a caution to not eat a lot because food got calories. So just, I'm just making an admission on tape. So. <laughs> so God is not cruel God is not inconsistent God wants to allow situations to come into our lives to help us to trust him more and so what can happen as uh, James is, is, is dealing with this misbelief is the fact that everything good comes from God I'm going to say that again Everything good comes from God, and God don't change. So, if everything good comes from God, and God don't change, then that means that God only gives good. And so, we sometimes blame God for our miscalculations, we blame God for our fall into temptation. We blame God for whatever reason that we fail so that we do not have to accept the blame ourselves. Now I'm saying we, because we, 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 we do that. But the Lord wouldn't allow that to happen. Well, temptation is going to come, but once we gravitate toward the temptation and then we relish in the temptation, then it becomes the sin. For instance, if you don't like Korean food, the nice spicy barbecue that's just so awesome. But if you don't like Korean food, if you don't like kimchi, for instance, and, and I walked up to you and I know that you, you know, you're on a diet and I try to put some kimchi in front of you, you're going to be like, I don't want that. But now, if I had a Big Mac and you, you know, and you have a, a strong liking for Big Macs and I walk up to you with a Big Mac and hold that in front of you, then that becomes a temptation because it's something that you're already drawn to. But God does not do that to us. He does not bring these things in front of you to cause you to fall. He wants you to depend on him in every situation so that he can increase your faith. Remember, the fight is not against the devil. The fight is not against the temptation. The fight is to cause you to lose faith or not to believe that God is able to deliver you from your situations. That's why it's called misbelief because you don't believe that God is able to do what he said he's going to do. So James is bringing out the fact that 
Listen, everything good comes from God. God created everything. God created the order of the cosmos. He created the, 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 the perfect balance for the sustainability of humans in the earth. And so even then, the world is constantly changing. We have the uh, uh, different processes going on, but they're all happening and still everything is going well. God created the sun, the moon. God created everything, and he said it was good. <clears throat> and so God, so James is saying, because God has made it and God ain't changing, there's no changing going to happen to the good that God is going to do. God is going to, there's no veritableness, there's no change, there's no waving. It's consistent. It is good. This is a new year. There's new opportunities. We're always talking about new, but I want us to remember that God is the same forever and ever. The writer said that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same. That means it's consistent. That means it's going to happen. That means it's going to be good. That is how this works out for you. Even though everything about this earth is changing. We're in a season right now, the winter time, when everything changes and goes into a resting state. But as soon as it stays consistently hot long enough, everything's going to come out of that state and change, and there's going to be blooms and, and everything going on. And then over, after a while, it's going to get so hot that everything, is, we're going to try to hide underneath the shade, and then it's going to get cooler and then the leaves are going to fall off and the process just keeps going and changing and changing and changing but God is the same even in the midst of him creating something that changes so much he still is the same so even though we live in this scientific world where our understanding of consistency and immutability is mechanistic, which means it just it happens in this certain sequence, everything happens this way. We expect machines to work in completely predictable ways. We expect computers to always treat our commands in the same way. Maybe we think of scientific laws, we can always count on gravity. If we jump off a building, we'll fall to the ground unless something catches us. But part of what makes computers and gravity consistent is that they are unfeeling. <laughs> humans are messy. Humans are complicated. Machines and laws of nature are consistent. But they're apathetic to our predicaments. And sometimes we take that way of thinking and apply it to God. If God can't change, it means he doesn't experience change as a result of forces outside himself. This must mean he's apathetic. And much theology has been warped by trying to reconcile God's classic attributes of immutability, that he does not change, with impassibility, that he is not swayed by uncontrollable passions, with his clear concern for his creation. That God, that God does not change could make him seem uncaring. But God's unchanging attributes, purposes, and characters don't make him apathetic. They make him our firm foundation. Yes. It's kind of like the parent dealing with the child. There's a common thing that happens when a child has finally been directed to sleep in their own bed in their own room. And they start hearing things. Or they see something underneath the bed or see something in the closet. One of our favorite family uh, movies is Major Pain. Now, now, when you watch the movie, you're going to be like, yeah, family's kind of got some issues. Yes, we, we do have some issues. But my point is, there was a little boy in there, an orphan, who was in the house. And 
and the major pain was trying to put him in the bed. And he puts him in the bed. The young boy comes out and says, I can't go to sleep. There's a monster in my closet. And so Major Payne said, there's a monster in your closet. He says, yes. So Major Payne walks in there, and he pulls out his pistol, and he empties his pistol into the closet. And he said, if that monster in there, he's unhappy now, and he's going to leave. And so the health care worker comes up there, and she says, what's going on? And the little boy comes out and says, the monster... Uh, Major Payne eliminated the monster in my uh, closet with heavy prejudice. <laughs> Thank you, Major Payne. And then he goes to bed. In, that, in the midst of that, we know that there was not a monster in the closet. And Major Payne did go to an extreme in order to prove to that young man that there was no monster in the closet. But sometimes we come to God with a situation, but, and God, not uncaringly, because he cares for us, here's what our issue is, but he then says, it's okay, I got you, trust me. And there's been some parents that have had to lay down in the bed with their child so that whatever the issue was doesn't come out to get them, and then they fall asleep and the parent can get up. But the, the more mature one has an understanding of what's going on and does it in such a way that causes the, the less mature one to feel comfort and love. That's why God is our firm foundation, that there's nothing that can come up against us that God is not bigger than. And because we understand that and know that, we know that we can walk in and say, this is bothering me. In fact, I believe it's Peter who said, why don't you just cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. And then James decides to finish it up like this. He says, listen, what God's unchangingness means for us, he has become this firm foundation for us to stand on. God is the giver of all good gifts. But we should always have a mindset. We should always have an understanding that the gifts that he gives us are gifts that we should receive with open hands. And that means that just like they come to us, we should also be willing to give them out. Also knowing that although these earthly gifts may break, they may fall, they may disappear, dissipate, but God will not. And so the result of that posture of us having these open hands, having this heart that reflects God and Jesus and how we operate in that, we become the first fruits. We become the first results of God's goodness in the earth. We become the example for all others to see what it is that God is doing in the earth. We are the ones that become the reflection of God's grace, mercy, and peace to others because we are his examples. We are the first ones. We are the number one. We are the ones that have resulted because, uh, uh, become the result of what Jesus has done on the cross. And so as we enter this new year, we have the freedom not to try to hold on to the good gifts of last year with clenched fists or, or desperately trying to make sure nothing changes or desperately trying to find out when the next good gift is coming our way. It, this makes me remember a story. I was getting ready to finish, but then something came to my mind. I have a younger brother and a younger sister. And every Christmas for a while, my younger sister would get, because we're on social media, she'd get a spanking. Uh, y'all, y'all know, uh, every Christmas and she would be like she, she would get gifts 
but she would always want something else. To the point that she didn't want anything that she got, and she had this big attitude to the point she started crying. Now, those of y'all that grew up in my household knew that if you cried for no reason, then for some reason my mom thought that she should give you something to cry for. Now, I still don't understand that. I even said that when I became an adult. But I was just like, well, why don't you just give me some tissue to stop crying? But that ain't usually what happened. They said, if you're going to keep crying, I'm going to give you something to cry for. And the cry for was another spanking. Well, anyway, every Christmas. And so sometimes we can do that same thing. We can have these gifts that God has given us, this good that God has done for us, and we can just look at it as, okay, I got that, now where's my next thing? Instead of being grateful for what you have at that time. And realize if you don't get anything else, it's all good. Because I know that God got me. My little sister probably going to be like, why do you keep bringing that up? Anyway, so as we enter this new year, we have the freedom not to hold on to the good gifts of last year with a clenched fist. Like, God, I'm going to hold on to this because this is all I know. We are going to be free about it. And if someone else needs the gift that we have, we give it freely, knowing that God, who is our firm foundation, will give to us freely, just like he gave his son to us freely, because he wants us to be reflections of him on the earth. We want to be the redemption conduit of God for the earth. We want to be that example. So we have this opportunity to work for goodness, to work for justice, to work for beauty, and stand firm on the foundation of salvation brought to us by the God who is always faithful to his promises. It's a new year, but God ain't changing. And because God is not changing, he's going to be consistent. He's going to be sustaining. He's going to be that firm foundation for us in the midst of whatever it is that we're going through. So as we're starting this new year of 2022, I want you to hold on to the fact that God is the same God. And he does not change. He's there for you. And he loves you so much that he can be whatever you need for him to be. And with that said, if you don't have a relationship with God, this is what I want to encourage you to do this day. Because this is a new year and, and folks make resolutions and all these other things about changes, I want you to change the direction that your life is going in. And the way that we change the direction that our life is going in is a word called repent. And repent means that I am going to move in a new direction. And in, for us to do that, we have to confess that we know that Jesus is our way, our truth, and our life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And it also says that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the reason we end up calling on the Lord is because we realize within ourselves we cannot accomplish the peace that we desire. We cannot accomplish the joy that we seek. We cannot make it without the Lord being in our life. In order for that to happen, we accept Jesus as God's gift to us. His relationship to us is based upon our relationship with Jesus. And so I encourage you today to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And when you do that, You'll be reconciled to God, and he has good gifts that he wants to put into your life and cause you to become an example of his love, grace, and mercy to this entire world. 
If you have made that decision today, this is what I want you to do. I want you to email us at info at godshousecc.com. That's info at godshousecc.com. And we will respond back to you and we will assist you along this journey. I say this every Sunday that this is not an individual sport. This is a team event where we'll come alongside you and assist you in becoming all that God has for you to be. And so that you can get the benefits, all the benefits that God has for you. So again, let us know info at godshousecc.com and we will definitely get back with you. Well, friends and family, our first message of the year, New Year, same God. In fact, our additional hashtag for this year is going to be hashtag same God. Because we want to remember that no matter what we're going through, God is the same. He is that firm foundation. Well, until next week when we start our new series, our very first series for this year. For this year and uh, come on back next week and we'll let you know. Well, no, let me tell you this. We are doing some changes and I'm going to let you know on Friday what the message is going to be on Sunday. That's a new thing that we're going to be doing just doing a quick little overview and letting you know so that you can prepare to come and hang out with us either via uh, online or here at the uh, Fairview location, 642 Fairview Road. Well, that's it. And until next week, God's blessings be upon you in Jesus' name.